Take over. You can tell us why we're here, what's going on. No worries. Well, thank you, uh, Laura. It's uh, just to let you know this part of what we do every month and have been doing for over 10 years the um, Combined Churches Victory Meeting, uh, which we hold in Western Sydney. But of course, the recent events have caused us to be online. If you want more information about this theme, the Where To Now theme that we've uh, set this meeting up on. Um, there is a to an email list that you can join at the end of the Beautiful Feet Task Force blog spot. So if you if you write it down or type it into your browser, Beautiful Feet Task Force dot blogspot dot com, uh, you'll see the last article is about this event, and at the end there is an opportunity for you to. Uh, put your information in to get more information as we uh, bring other speakers and people uh, up for this uh, sort of theme. So thank you Laura, um, you're doing a great job there and good to see you again after so long. And uh, Pastor Paul DeWilt leading us in worship from the Hunter Valley in uh, New South Wales, Australia. Appreciate that Paul. Paul's been one of those that's um, he moved up to the Hunter Valley, I don't know, a couple of years or so back, um, but he was uh, often at our physical meetings and leading worship and in uh, speaking. And uh, do want to commend that blog post that I just referenced, um, where all our speakers' details are uh, explained and there are links to their resources and their books and things like that. You do need to read that, they've got some great material. So I want to just say that we, we planned this over a month ago and we had the first Where To meeting um, last month on the 3rd of July. And uh, we had five apostolic leaders from five continents uh, sharing their thoughts. It was a great meeting and we were uh, very impressed with what people had to say. Since then, Coronavirus, COVID-19, or call it whatever you like, um, has, uh, we thought things were bad, but in the last month, things have got a lot worse. Um, I just added up the numbers. There's been 8 million more cases of COVID-19 since we last met online a month ago. Um, and there's now about 177,000 people have died from this disease. Um, just this year. So uh, it, this is not a small thing and uh, many countries are experiencing second and third waves of infection. I'm sure you're well aware of these things, but the underlying problems that are associated with this, aside from uh, the health problems and the unemployment and the national economic crisis that most countries are facing, there, there's a bigger problem here and uh, this is one of the reasons why I felt that we needed to get people together to speak about where the church is, where it's at and what it ought to be doing. Because I see, and the Lord told me back in February that we're going to see something far worse than the health issues associated with this virus. And what we're seeing now is fear, anxiety and mental issues and increase in suicides. And uh, it's all over the world. And I have a niece who's a nurse in the children's mental health system in Australia, in Sydney. And she says there isn't a spare bed in Sydney for a child with a mental health problem. There is in a hospital, they, they're just full. Um, it's just indicative of the problem that we're facing. And the reason we have such a problem is we have so many people a vast majority of people in this world that do not have an anchor for their soul. And so we want to talk a bit about that. Um, many countries, as you are probably aware, churches are not allowed to meet at all. Uh, some were, are allowed to meet with severe restrictions on numbers and their activities, others with some restrictions and others with none at all. But what we can't deny is that the way we do church globally has changed. It's changed maybe for a long time, maybe forever. 
But one thing I know, and that is Jesus is still the same. Jesus still saves, he still heals, he still provides peace, he still imputes righteousness to those who make him Lord. He still provides, he still protects. And so if there's a great global catastrophe of health and economic and traumatic consequences in every country, we need to know what the church leaders should be teaching to the church. We need to know what the church should be saying about current events. We need to know what the church should be doing about this crisis, both now and beyond. So to prepare the church witness, providing hope to those who believe um, their lives are hopeless, and there are many that believe that. And how can we go about winning the lost into the kingdom of God in a world where we can't do it in the ways in which we've done it in the past? You know, Sunday services, big events, programs, our prayer sessions, a lot of that is cancelled. Let's face it, it hasn't really been that effective anyway. So uh, how should the church be preparing for the new normals of restricted life? Just looking at the world, the current population of the world is a little over 7.8 billion people. And there's about 81 million people being born, or not being born, sorry, adding to that increase of population every year. So that's the net increase of about 81 million people every year. <clears throat> what are we doing to win these people for Jesus? Approximately one third of the world call themselves Christian. Approximately one third of those have a born again experience. That's less than a billion people out of 7.8. About one third of the world's population live within reach of Christian people or a church or the Bible in their language or culture. And about one third have no access to Christianity in their culture in any form. Let's face it, Jesus said, go into all the world and preach the gospel. But in 2000 years, we've only managed to win approximately 11% of the kingdom's cause. We need to admit that our efforts, both conscious and unconscious, big and small, home and abroad, have not really done the job. Now with restrictions on movement, on gathering, on singing, on touching, tighter economies, less opportunities to evangelize in the ways that we've done it in the past. I think the church needs to rethink its position, its methods, and its, strat its strategies. I believe that 2020, this year, will be a watershed in the church's history. Will we get it right and power ahead? Or will we get it wrong and be assigned to a period in history when the church ignored what God was saying and doing and go into serious decline. Today, I look forward to hearing what our guests have got to say. I believe that God is saying to the church in these days, things that we need to hear. God is never silent, but sometimes our ears are dull. So we've chosen to ask people from frontline ministries around the world to participate and share with us what we believe or what they believe God is is saying to them in these days. I've got a few thoughts I might share later but uh, what we all know about the many and varied crises that we're facing in the population right now, I thought it was appropriate that we should ask these leaders, people who are on the front line and uh, out there doing what God has called them to do and making a difference. So we had the last videos from the last one a month ago, which are available for you to watch if you want to on the Beautiful Feet Task Force Facebook page or YouTube page. So that's my introduction. That sort of tells us where we've come from, how we've got to be here and what we're hoping to hear. Um, I'd like to hand it back to Laura. Thank you. And uh, these people that are on here tonight, they're people that I've connected with in some way or other over the years and uh, have great respect for the ministries that they're involved with. So thanks, Laura. No worries. Thanks, Howard. Howard, I will uh, throw it over to you. All right. Great. Thank you. Um, so appreciate everybody's 
uh, input tonight. A um, lot of uh, good stuff. Um, I think there's quite a bit of uh, flow on and, and similarity with the, the messages from last month. Um, Suzette in Germany, thank you. Uh, we appreciated hearing about the, the coming bride and getting the bride ready. And uh, Howard Barnes spoke a lot about that last month. Um, oh. so, so very important that we as the church be ready. Um, Vince, just coming back to your closing point there about um, the um, uh, mediocrity. Uh, I think Jesus says in Revelation, you know, I wish that you're either hot or cold, but if you're lukewarm, I'll spew you out. And, uh, you know, we know where we stand. Jesus said, uh, if, if you're not for me, you're against me. If you're not against me, you're for me. In other words, there's no fence. Uh, you either make a decision where you're going and uh, before Jesus, then you need to be putting it all out there. Uh, Bishop Joseph, uh, good to see you again after so long. Uh, hearing um, your comments about the smallness and the small groups and love um, flourishing in this time of uh, distance, um, true love. And I thought that was fantastic. So uh, loved those points, appreciated you. Uh, we've got people from all around the world here. We've got several people on here in Africa and, and uh, a number of other places. It's so exciting to see the, the Christian church coming together. You know, Jesus said that he would build the church. Our job is to preach the kingdom. Um, and we don't have to worry about that. <laughs> whether we use it or not is immaterial uh, the it's his church and he is building a church it's his church and we it's not our church and i tell people in conferences all all over the place uh, we do a lot of uh, unity conferences and we want to tell people uh, you think you're the senior pastor you might be the senior pastor but it's not your church it's it's the church that he has got you to be shepherding and it's not your church, it's his church. We don't have a church, we don't have any people. They're not my, they're his people. It's not my church, it's his church. And I've just got a job in that church and everyone has a job in that church. And uh, mediocrity isn't gonna cut it in this, this age. Um, so thank you uh, for that one, Vince. I do want to close with some comments about, um, perhaps practical comments about the way in which church is now the way we hold what we call church um, our gathering our meeting our service um, in most places there are some kind of reasons and we can't still go back to what we had last year but um, we've embraced various forms of uh, online and digital communication uh, but it's not a total solution. We probably need to get better at this. And I, for one, am on a steep learning curve, learning how to do this. And, um, but I, I think we've got to get better at it, but it's not the, it's not the answer. It's not the total solution. It's, it's the personal witness that we have of our life with others, both written, spoken, and action that causes people to see Christ. Uh, so what are we doing about our personal witness and how are we uh, causing disciples to grow? You see, true believers uh, need to know how to practice developing disciples. Jesus didn't just call 12 disciples and tell them to go and win the world. He said, go and make disciples. And this is something that largely we have not done as a church is we've, we've put people up the front and caused them to be the people who do the discipling. But in Timothy chapter two and verse two, Paul is talking to Timothy and he's teach those who are good people who will learn how to teach others also. And in that one verse, you get four generations. Paul says, I've taught you Timothy. Now you teach those who will be able to teach others also. You've got four generations or four levels of church plant happening in that one verse. And what we have largely done is we've made the ministry professional. 
and and God never intended it to be professional. God intended it for us to have a relationship with him. And through that relationship, we will bring others into a relationship and we will disciple them to be the kind of people that he called us to be. So by not doing this, we have an ineffective, inactive, faithless church. And we need to change that. So my word to leaders in his church is that we need to teach the people how to live active, faith-filled lives, how to believe God for answers in impossible situations, how to understand the position of victory that we have in Christ and learn how to use it. And we need to use whatever tools we can. We need to get better at that, but we need to also have tools that will help us do this, develop tools such as books or audio or video teaching or classes or um, online Zoom meetings or whatever, uh, where we can meet with people and teach them. Even if we can meet with a few people in a home, many places are allowing that, not everywhere, but uh, if we can meet with people in a home, we can disciple people. Many of the discipling uh, actions that we've taken have been with small groups of people. And uh, I think that's been mentioned uh, before. I want to mention that the fastest church growth movement in the world is not a western mega church some Amen. people might think of some church or other that's got thousands whatever um even more but the fastest growing church planting movement in the world which planted more than 1.8 million churches in 10 years i'll just let that sink in 1.8 million churches. Most of those churches are less than 20 people and meet in homes, factories, offices, shops, um, and they're people discipling people. They're people who take those that they've won to the Lord and teach them what the gospel is all about and teach them how to win people to the Lord. And in this time of smallness, maybe we need to go back to the system that God gave us in the first place, which was disciple people be out there and to Christ and then teach them how to win others and reproduce what we have so there's no space for mediocrity because in mediocrity you don't want to do anything you want to be an observer but in in the kingdom God's called us to reproduce ourselves this is one of the reasons that we've recently launched the in Africa the ministry training school teaching the foundations of an overcoming victorious Christian life and teaching them how to set up and run their own training schools when they've done the course. And when their students complete the course, they can set up their own school and run the course and teach people how to uh, be disciples of Jesus. So I commend to you the uh, Beautiful Fleet Task Force blog spot or YouTube where you can see the, uh, the two minute promo of that video and you can see all the other information regarding the last uh, where to now meeting we had a month ago and you can see our speakers on the blogs and the links to their resources there's some great books out there um, I first met Vince Esterman he didn't meet me I met him I met him in his book um, read your book several years ago Vince about um, winning people for Jesus in Paris and just loved it um, and just kind of felt an affinity with you because of the connection that you had with winning people to the Lord. I just want to encourage people to have a look at uh, the resources that are available. Um, Paul DeWilt, who's led us in worship. Thank you, Paul. He's got a great book out, read his book too, um, uh, about everyday miracles. And uh, as a bus driver, he was meeting people on the bus and winning them to Jesus and praying for them. And they'd get back on the bus this week and they'd say, oh, that problem that you prayed for last week, it's gone, it's healed. And uh, so exciting. So thank you to Paul for leading us in worship. Thank you to Laura for uh, emceeing our meeting tonight. I appreciate you. Um, the words from our speakers, Vince, um, Suzette and Joseph, thank you. Uh, we really appreciated your input and getting this um, 
of who we are in Christ and, and what God has called us to be and, and being the people that God has called us to be, not something, not something superfluous, not some professional show, but, but who God has called us to be and uh, to be that person and be the best at that that we can be. Because, you know, to be somebody else, but somebody else, you're just you. So just be the best you that you can be. Um, yeah, amen. Because, you know, you can't, be, you can't be better at being somebody else than they are. So just be you and be the best you that you can be. Um, I also want to thank, uh, and to thanks Ralph and Linda for looking out for our tech tonight. Uh, they're in the background. They've just got a black screen, but they're doing a great job. And I just wanted to make mention of them and thank you. And uh, Michael Wortley, who is here for editing our videos, appreciate me so much. And um, Joy, my lovely wife, who's on there somewhere, uh, just being the greatest support to this ministry ever. Uh, thank you so much. Love you, dear. And um, <clears throat> we, we would, it wouldn't be, uh, it wouldn't be uh, a Christian meeting without an offering. So we're going to give you the opportunity to, uh, it, to give, if you like, and to the ministry. Um, and you'll need to go to either the Facebook event page or to the Beautiful Feet blog spot page for the details on how to do that. Um, I'm not going to make a big song and dance about it. You, uh, if you're a Christian, do that. And uh, so we'll just leave that one with you. I think I thank everybody. I think we've gone plenty long enough. Um, we've had a great word. Great to hear from everybody. And we'd just love to stay in touch. So um, just make sure you sign up for the, the emails if you want to get the emails about what we're doing if you're uh, not in Australia. Uh, those that are in Australia, you can, if you're not already getting them, you can get onto the emails for the combined Christian churches meetings. And um, who knows where this ride is going to go? I said uh, a month ago, it's going to be an interesting six months. And uh, it's already been interesting. Yeah. But are we going to be the people that God has called us to be and do what he's called us to do?